Howdy folks, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to begin chapter 9. Chapter 9 is going to be our last chapter uh, that we're going to cover for the, for the year. Uh, chapter 9 is going to focus on circles. Uh, so this first section, a lot of what I'm about to show you may be review. Uh, you, you probably have seen a lot of this already before. Okay, so let's start off with our basics about circles. Uh, first of all, we probably should start off with the definition of a circle. A circle is a set of all possible points that are a given distance away from a given point. So there's always a point we start with, which is known as the center of the circle. Okay, so again, a circle is a set of all possible points. that are a given distance, which by the way, that given distance is referred to as the radius. So in this case, on my circle I've drawn here, here's uh, that given distance known as the radius. So it's a set of all possible points that are a given distance away from a given point. As I mentioned earlier, that given point right there is known as the center of the circle. Of course, now there are other uh, components to a circle as well that have special names. Uh, you may already know then, uh, if this is a radius, then if I draw a segment that runs through that center point from edge to edge like this, that one is known as a diameter. Uh, and of course, uh, a diameter, as you can see, is made up of not one, but two radii. That's the uh, plural of radius. We don't say radius, this is, you know, it's radii. So two radii equal one diameter. Now, uh, there may be some things that maybe you haven't learned yet, though, about circles. Uh, for example, a diameter is a type of special segment in a circle uh, that goes from edge to edge of the circle. Okay, and if you, you, you could draw more of these, but uh, that, that don't necessarily go through the center. You know, like if I draw one from edge to edge, like right there. Uh, a diameter and this as well are both types of this, and they're called chords. You know, it's kind of like uh, in music when you play a guitar uh, or, or other types of uh, instruments, you uh, can play different chords. But any kind of stringed instrument, uh, the, the sound a chord makes on that stringed instrument depends on how long the strings are. Uh, so chords go from edge to edge of the circle, and they can have varying lengths. Uh, of course, the further I get away from the center of the circle, the shorter the chords get. So the diameter is special in that it is a chord that is the longest possible uh, chord that you can make in a, in a circle. Uh, going back to our music idea too, by the way, uh, I don't know if you knew this, if you're familiar at all with music, uh, the shorter the chords, when you go to pluck those strings, uh, they make a higher pitch. They, they have a, uh, you know, they reach higher notes. So the lower notes are created by longer chords. So a diameter, you might say, is a chord that would create uh, one of the lower sounds that a string would make if you strike it. Okay, so... Um, one of the other things that you may have already known uh, the name of is a term we use for the distance around the, the uh, outer edge here of the circle. Okay, that distance around is known as the circumference. Circumference. And uh, circumference then can be calculated using a certain formula. Uh, in fact, the formula for circumference 
is actually directly related to uh, the value of pi. Uh, pi, as you have probably talked about in your other math classes, uh, is a constant value. It's about 3.14. Uh, but a lot of people, when I ask them, don't know where that value comes from. And uh, the value of pi was discovered to come from a ratio. Someone figured out long ago that no matter what size of circle you have, whether it be a small circle or a big circle, if you measure around that circle, or if you find its circumference, and you uh, put that in a ratio of circumference to the diameter of the circle, you know, the distance through that center, then it always comes out to a constant value that we have given the label pi. And that constant value, as we mentioned, and as you already know, is about 3.14. Okay, but that's uh, actually where pi comes from, the value of pi. And because this is true in this equation, this is also how we can figure out circumference then. So if you do a little bit of algebra here and manipulate our equation, we can multiply this by d to get rid of this d that's being divided. I'm just simply doing the opposite. A divided by d, I'm going to multiply by d. Okay, and that's going to cancel that out, but whatever I do to one side... I've got to do to the other side as well. So as you can see then, uh, that gives us a, a uh, formula for circumference. We can now write this as circumference equals pi times diameter. But more often than not, uh, the equation for circumference is usually written instead of in terms of diameter, uh, and it's written in terms of a radius. So remember, Every diameter equals 2 radii. So if I replace the D with 2 R's, our, now, uh, uh, our circumference equation now would look like this. Instead of pi times diameter, uh, we could say now it's 2 times pi times R. Because again, 2 times R is equal to D. 2 radii equal 1 diameter. Okay? So that tends to be the formula that uh, most people are familiar with and use because all it requires is a radius rather than the full diameter. Okay, so uh, with all that in mind, let's jump into some problems here. So give me a minute here. I'm going to clear the board. Okay, and... Uh, Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot to mention the symbol for a circle. Uh, circles are always referred to by their center point. So uh, in this picture here, you know, no matter what I draw in here, let's say I put the following and label this A, B, C, and then our center point here in the middle, um, oh, I don't know, let's go with... Uh, just the point P, I guess. Okay, but that's how you refer back to this circle. So if I were to refer to this, the symbol for a circle looks like just a miniature circle with a little center point, so you don't confuse it with uh, the letter O or a zero, and you name it by its center point. So this is referred to as circle P. Uh, is it a perfect system? No, no it is not. Uh, you could have circles that uh, all share the same center point. You know, I could have another bigger circle going around like this that has that same center P. Uh, so it's not a perfect system. Uh, if this does happen, though, oftentimes you'll refer to the circles by their radius. So you might say circle P with the shorter radi radius AP here, you know, versus the bigger circle, Okay. But uh, that is how you name then any circle using that symbol, which looks like a miniature circle, and you name it by its center point. All right, so in this example here, let's just start off with in circle P, name each of the following.
All right, so let's start with uh, any and all radii. There's, again, plural radius, R-A-D-I-I, -I, radii. Okay, so in this picture, I mean, if you take a quick glance at it, try to figure out how many radii there are, radiuses. Uh, in this picture, I hope you notice that there are not one, not two, but three. Uh, all radii are going to start at the center point, so if you just kind of work your way out to the edge of the circle, there's all your radii. There's a radius PA. And by the way, these are just segments we're naming, so just like you would any other segment, put a little segment above it. Uh, there's a PB and, of course, a PC, all three of which are radii. Uh, keep in mind that in a circle, all radii are going to be congruent to each other as well. So we know that the length of this will match the length of that will match the length of this. It's, it's by nature has to be true because that's how you make a circle. You know, that distance stays the same as you draw your circle. Okay, what if I said then uh, name all chords, okay? And I'm going to add on to my picture here. Um, I'm going to draw one there, okay, and I'm going to go one more here, in fact, call that a point D. Neither of those were radii, so it didn't change that answer, okay, but for chords, again, remember a chord is any segment that's going to run from edge to edge of the circle, so the segment CD itself that I just pointed to there, that's a chord. Okay, there's more though, right? When you're looking at this, I hope you can see that there are actually two more answers. Uh, the one I just drew in earlier too here as well, the uh, chord CA. But a lot of people overlook this last one. Uh, remember, this is the longest possible chord you can make in a circle. And uh, the reason people overlook this and forget about this answer is because it has its own special name. We call it a diameter. A diameter is a chord. And look, it goes all the way across from C to B. Okay, do not call it CPB. You know, when have we ever named a segment using a, a point in the middle of the segment? We don't, right? Just use the endpoints. So CB would be the last and third final chord in this picture. Okay, if I did ask you then to name any and all diameters in particular... Well, as you can see, this picture only has one, and it's CB. So it qualifies as both. It's a diameter and it's a chord. All right, now what if I gave you a problem like this? What if I told you, uh, for example, that uh, the length of segment PA, let's say, if PA equals... 4.2, then let's see if you can figure out what CB has to equal. Okay, now notice that PA that I named here is a radius. Okay, and the CB that I want you to find uh, is not a radius, but instead a diameter. Again, don't forget what relationship the two have. A diameter is made up of not one, but two radii. So if I know that this radius PA is 4.2, then all three of these are the same. You know, that's 4.2. That's 4.2. CB then is twice of uh, that length. So instead of being only 4.2, of course, that means CB is 8.4. 4.2 plus 4.2. Uh, given that same information, what if I asked you then, what is the circumference of the circle? Okay, now don't forget that uh, we can use either formula. We can use either the uh, pi times diameter, or like I said, the more uh, popular and familiar one that most people know is 2 pi r using the radius. Uh, pa is that radius. So if I were to simply plug that 4.2 in here, we can figure out what our circumference is here. Feel free to use a calculator. Uh, remember that pi 
Uh, you probably learned this on, on Pi Day in your past math classes, that Pi is an irrational number, meaning that it's a number that never ends. Uh, it's an endless decimal, has no pattern in it, you know, doesn't repeat. Um, so when we go to do our multiplication here, for the sake of accuracy, I highly recommend that when you do your calculations on your calculator, that you use your pi key. Now the pi key on our graphic calculator is right above that uh, key that I call the caret key. Uh, you can see it, it, mine's in blue. And that means I'm going to have to hit my second button in order to get that. And uh, I highly recommend you use that on your calculator because it has pi already programmed in here uh, out to like eight different digits. So it's a lot more accurate than just going 3.14. You know, uh, especially when we work with some bigger numbers uh, and, and do calculations uh, of that nature. Uh, it can throw your answer off quite a bit if you round it too much. So... I always recommend using the pi key on your calculator. Okay, so I'm going to punch in uh, two times. And then again, my pi, I get by hitting second in the caret key. And times my radius of 4.2. Okay, then uh, it's going to give me some big long decimal here. All I'm going to do is simply round that answer. Uh, and you know my rule of thumb. If I don't tell you otherwise, just go ahead and round to the nearest tenth, one decimal place. So our 26.38 becomes 26.4 is what that would round to. Uh, and it, of course, if it had a label, you could label that as well. Like if this was in inches, then this would be in inches as well. Think of circumference a lot like perimeter. It's distance around the outside. So this uh, circle would be 26.4 inches all the way around the outside of it. Okay, now, um, while we're still doing the circumference problems, sometimes they'll mix it up. Instead of giving you the radius and having you calculate the circumference, uh, there's a chance that they may uh, flip the situation on you and uh, maybe give you the circumference and have you find uh, the radius or diameter for that matter. Which by the way, on that last problem, uh, if they asked you for the diameter, you would have just doubled the radius. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here, let's say that, uh, that I gave you the circumference of a circle as being 76.4 centimeters. So if the, if the circumference is that, Let's see if you can find, uh, well, we'll just have you find both, the radius and diameter. Okay, well, again, we could just simply use the formula, 2 pi r for circumference. I'm going to take the 76.4 and plug it in right there for the C. And... Pi, remember, is already a value we know. It's not a, a variable. It's not an unknown. So the only unknown left in this equation is the r. We're going to solve for that r. So to get rid of the pi, or even the 2 for that matter, well, they're both being multiplied. So to get rid of them, we're going to divide. So I'm going to divide by the pi and the 2 so that both cancel. Same over here. Whatever I do to one side, i got to do to the other. Now be really careful here though. Uh, when you go to punch this into your calculator, uh, don't just hit 76.4 divided by two, 2 pi. Uh, your calculator will think that you only want to take 76.4 divided by, divided by 2, and then it'll think you want to take the whole thing then times pi, when you want to divide by pi as well. So when you go to punch it in your calculator, after hitting the division key, you'll want to put this in parentheses to let your calculator know that you're dividing by 2 and pi, not just the 2. Okay, so again, on my calculator, I punch in 76.4. I'm going to hit divided by, and then I'm going to put this 2 pi in parentheses. Here, I'll show you again up close what I'm doing there. Okay, see it? the 2 pi in parentheses, so that it knows to divide by both the 2 and the pi. 
Uh, that gives me now a radius, uh, if I round this now to about 12.2, it was 12.15, uh, nine something there. Okay, that's your radius. And then of course our diameter, I had to find both radius and diameter, uh, would be this radius times two. Uh, rather than multiplying this rounded answer times two, I'm going to take that answer I still had in my calculator here. I'm just going to multiply that times two. Because then you'll see this rounds to 24.3. That's a little more accurate, see, for a diameter than if I had doubled this rounded answer and got 24.4. You know, it throws it off by a tenth there. All right, now, all these problems, though, that I've been doing are all uh, circumferences that have been rounded. You know, anytime you multiply by pi, which is an endless decimal, that means that you're going to get an answer that will be an endless decimal. You know, uh, uh, if you multiply by an irrational number like that, then your answer will be irrational. It will be also an endless decimal. So sometimes on these problems, though, they're going to ask you for what they call an exact circumference. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, let's say I've got a problem like, uh, well, let's start off with an easy one here. Let's say I've got a circle like this, and then it's enclosed inside of A square like this you know this is all right angles let's say there's a little square okay and then maybe uh, maybe they tell you that the length of this side here is uh, uh, nine nine feet and then if I ask you then uh, what is the exact circumference Okay, now when, they, when you write an exact circumference, again, we don't want some big decimal that we're going to have to round. So it's as simple as this. Uh, if pi is an irrational number and you multiply by it, it causes your answer to be irrational in an endless decimal. Then stop uh, at the point where you don't multiply by the pi yet. You know, like I said earlier, circumference is 2 pi r or... Don't forget that other one, pi times diameter. In this case, I want to look at the, this formula, pi times diameter, because uh, this 9, as you can see, is one of the sides of the square. But if I were to slide that over, you know, to say right in here, do you see that that also, that 9, is also the diameter, diameter of that circle? So I'm going to plug that 9 in right here, and it would just be 9 times pi, and that is the exact circumference. That's all you have to do. Don't multiply by the pi yet, because as soon as you multiply by that pi, it's going to become some big, long decimal, okay? And you don't want that, okay? So leave it uh, as a nice, short, exact answer by, by leaving it as 9 pi. And then that way, whoever uh, wants to figure out the circumference of this they can do the multiplication themselves. They can figure out the decimal version, and they could round it to whatever they would want. So that's the beauty of an exact circumference. It's an exact answer, not rounded, uh, and it allows then whoever wants to, to to round it to whatever they want. Here, let's try another one of those, one that maybe is a little more difficult. But again, on this problem, I'm going to want the exact circumference. Okay, but uh, this time, let's go with a picture that looks like this. Okay, that is the center of the circle, so this is a diameter. And uh, let's say that we have a right triangle here. And uh, this side here is uh, three, oh, I don't know, centimeters. This side here is four centimeters, and I want the exact circumference, though, of the circle. All right, now, again, 
circumference is either 2 pi r or, don't forget, we could also use pi times diameter. Uh, so when I go to write my exact circumference, I'm going to leave uh, this in terms of pi. I really just need to figure out my diameter is what I need. So looking at my picture, I hope you see that the diameter, I'll label it as D here, runs all the way along there. It just so happens to be the last side of this triangle. And this triangle isn't just any triangle, it's a right triangle. So uh, if you're ever missing just one side of a right triangle, of course, you know, you can make use of the most famous theorem in, in geometry, uh, the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C should be your hypotenuse, or in this case, it's the diameter of the circle. So D diameter is going to go in for the C. And the 3 and the 4, their legs, they go in for the A and B. Well, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. Now 25 is the diameter squared, so that means then that uh, the diameter would be the square root. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. We found our missing side of our triangle, or in other words, the diameter of the circle is 5. And if I want an exact circumference, I would plug that diameter in here, and I get an exact circumference then of 5 times pi. Again, leave it in terms of pi so that Whoever your reader is, they can round to whatever they want. But that's what exact circumference is, and, and there'll be a few questions on your homework about that as well. Yeah, I think that should be enough to prepare you for your homework. Uh, and that's on pages 449 and 450, problems 14 through 25, and 29 through 31. Okay, don't forget to show work whenever you can, uh, or else if... Uh, if I see that you just put down answers and didn't show any work, you'll probably get docked. Uh, if you have any questions or need any help, uh, please contact me by uh, either email or send me a text through mine. Uh, and I'm probably looking to cut back on the office hours because uh, nobody seems to be <laughs> joining me for office hours, which I hope is a good sign that you already understand the material. But uh, I, I am available still to meet with you by Zoom. But uh, I'm probably going to start going to uh, by request now. Alrighty, well, I'll catch you again when we go to the next section.